Welcome back to the Happy Camper. Today's tech tip is on electrical service into your RV. Many times in a dealership I've received a phone call that said, the outlets don't work in my RV. If I get that phone call, the very first thing I start with is what is your electrical source? And that means what is your trailer plugged into? Is it plugged into generator or into shore power on a building or a pedestal at an RV park? An easy way to tell if your RV has electrical power coming in is right here. If the clock is on on the microwave, your RV does have 110 volt electricity. Your RV has two electrical systems, 110 volt AC system, which operates the microwave, the air conditioning, the outlets, in this particular unit, the electrical function on the refrigerator and the power converter. It also has a 12 volt DC electrical system that powers the interior lights, the fan on the furnace, and the LP side of your refrigerator, as well as your other appliances. The 120 volt system will start with a shore cord outside the unit where it plugs into the RV. The power runs from there over to the breaker box, which is right here in this particular coach, and this will be in different places in different units. Right over here we have 110 volt breakers on this side. The breakers being up indicates that they are on, a breaker down would indicate off, and a breaker that's stuck in the middle would indicate a tripped breaker, a tripped circuit. If that's the case, we would turn the breaker off and then back on to reset. In the center is the power converter module. That is taking 120 volt electricity and converting it to 12 volt DC electricity. And that's going to charge our batteries and also provide power into the, into the 12 volt grid. Over on this side, of course, you can see the 12 volt fuses. And these are very similar to your automotive fuses. You take an AT uh, ATM automotive fuse. Most of them are 15 amp. We do have a 40 and a 30 is going to be your main converter fuses. So if your outlets are not operating, the first thing to check is do we have electricity? If the microwave face is not on, that generally means that we do not have electricity. We start with the power cord outside. Now let's go outside and we'll look at the power cord. Today I have the, the unit plugged into a Yamaha 2200 IS inverter generator. You can see it's plugged in right here on the face on the 30 amp connector. The cord originates on the left hand side of, of the RV and this is pretty standard throughout the RV industry. This particular one pulls out of a little door right here on the side. There are some units that have a twistable connection over here that the cord detaches from the trailer and you store it away and then you lock it on the trailer and plug it in in the same fashion. So that will either come over and we'll plug into a generator like it is today, or you can plug it in to a wall outlet on a building, which will generally require an adapter like this to go from 30 amps that are on the trailer down to 15 amps that are gonna be on the building. If that's the case, you will not be able to operate your air conditioning because it is designed to be run on the 30 amp plug. If you're in an RV park, they will generally have 30 amp plugs available to plug directly into. Or on this generator, this one is equipped with 30 amp. The interesting thing to the new Yamaha 2200 is it does have a 30 amp outlet on the front of the generator. However, as I'm about to, about to show you, it does not produce enough electricity and wattage to operate the air conditioning. We'll go back to the outlets for just a minute. Your outlets that are located throughout your coach, here, 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 are all generally on the same circuit. And that circuit is indicated by this little sticker is a GFCI protected circuit. So if we have a, a reliable power source on the outside of the coach, we're plugged in to a reliable power source, 
the power comes in and into the breaker panel and all the breakers are on then we need to go and find the GFI reset in this particular trailer it's mounted underneath the dinette seat and it's indicated with these little buttons right on the front it'll have a test button which will be red and a reset button which will be black and all the outlets in the entire unit are generally chained to this one outlet so if we push the test button we'll see that it has a GFI trip and not all not all outlets will have this little light but this one does which is nice we'll be able to turn around and see that our indicator up here is going to be dead in all the other outlets okay this one happens to be that the microwave is on its own circuit and that is fairly common the microwave is generally not wired into the GFI so it will normally stay on even if our outlets don't and in that circumstance we simply locate the GFI this one being under the dinette is a little bit odd it is normally in the kitchen or in the bathroom area but this is a fairly small RV that we're using as our test subject today so this one happens to be located here no matter where the outlet is simply find it press the reset and you'll see the little light go off and our outlets will back be back to functioning that's probably the number one issue we find with electrical outlets not working the GFCI is tripped simply locate it and reset it the other thing that can happen is if you are running on a generator or you do have your adapter plugged into a smaller circuitry and you decide it's hot in the RV today I'm going to turn the air conditioning on and if we do not have enough power to do that I just heard my generator rev up outside and it just kicked my microwave on and off and there it's off altogether so what we've just done is we tripped the overload on the generator so in this circumstance make certain that the air conditioning is turned off we will go outside and we will reset our generator so the interesting thing with that is the generator has the plug that indicates that it's large enough but it quite honestly doesn't have the wattage and you can see the indicator here shows overload on the face of the generator in this circumstance with the Yamaha we simply turn the generator off the overload light will go out we turn the generator back on and we restart it the generator's back to normal use we'll go back inside and see that our see that our microwave face is back on electricity is restored to the unit with normal use if you do have a generator that you know is capable of operating your air conditioning and you have the same issue that I just presented the other very common issue is you will have your selector for your refrigerator over here on electricity or in a lot of units that simply just says auto if you're running an, an air conditioner on a generator make sure that your refrigerator is to the gas only that's showing a flame there the gas only mode that way we're not running more with our generator than we need to refrigerator takes a very small amount of power to operate or excuse me it takes a very small amount of propane to operate but a fairly large amount of electricity so make sure that your refrigerator is on the gas only setting before you start your air conditioning when you're running on generator the same can be said for water heaters there's not the, the water heaters are not as common to have an electrical setting but some do in most units it'll be right on the panel here you'll have two buttons instead of just one that says water heater you'll have two one that says electric water heat and one that says gas make sure you're running on gas 
and that way your air conditioning will run if you have the proper sized generator uh, operating this system. This has been a tech tip. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what we do here, please like, share, and subscribe. And check out our sponsor over at RockyMTNRV.com. Rocky Mountain RV provides all the inventory for our videos. So with that, I wish you a great day and happy camping.